chance sent for the invitation. Uh, I will try to explain in 20 minutes uh, what is the beast, this non-local theory, and why we want to consider inflation in such a theory. So I will go directly to the topic because I have no time for outline. It is this Lagrangian, which has this funny ingredient here. It's function of the Lambertian operator. This is something which comes from a number of motivations and <coughs> even though I don't have much time, I still want to answer the main question why am I at all interested in this story? And the history of this subject is a bit long and there are some crucial things here. Of course, not, not all names are here, so please don't judge me very <coughs> strictly. So, uh, one of the first dates, which is essential, it's 1850, when Ostrogradsky has put his statement about high derivatives and the presence of ghosts as long as we have high derivatives in a theory, when it was published apparently in French language in the Russian, in the Proceedings of Russian Academy of Science. And from that time, we kind of know that if you have high derivatives, it's not so good. But then, with the development of uh, our knowledge, we know yeah, first of all, as, well, as it was mentioned in 77 and 78, Stella published very remarkable papers about uh, renormalizability of r squared gravity, but again, there are ghosts there. Okay? Starabinsky in the 80s developed brilliant model of inflation, again based on r squared gravity, and this model up to now is the best one. It's just in the middle of Planck data. It's the best fit, so we have to pay great attention to it whatever we think about other models. However, there is an input from totally different side, uh, from totally different planet, let's say. Stringy guys, and especially Witten was very active <laughs> in this side. He introduced the so-called string field theory. Very interesting <coughs> subject. <coughs> string field theory on its own, very deep uh, object. Uh, nobody knows what to do with it completely. Many people are working, but the point is the following. This is some rigorous gauge invariant construction that describes interaction of strings. Uh, as long as you pay at least some attention to strings, you have to admit that strings, being non-local objects, feature non-local interaction. So as long as you may have at least tiny idea to consider strings, you must admit that at high energies, as long as you will consider interaction strings, the interaction effectively is described by non-local field series. And I will show exactly which kind of non-locality arrives. Okay? <coughs> then, uh, it was an idea published in paper of uh, Professor Arefio and myself in 2004 when we decided to couple for cosmological reasons non-local field coming from string field theory with gravity. It was an ad hoc coupling, just a non-local scalar field and gravity. And we have considered whether it can be useful for dark energy effects. Because uh, that time we already observed that it is a chance to violate null energy conditions and to non-locality. And then in 2005, Biswas Mazumdar and Ziegel published the paper where they have explicitly written an action which was on the previous page, something like this, with such a non-local term. And the rest I am not going to explain because <coughs> thanks to Leonardo Modesto we know as, <coughs> uh, much, uh, <coughs> we know a lot from the previous talk. And in fact, there, is, there are people in this auditorium, like Tony Povis or Robert Brandenberger, who are working with such theories. And uh, the subject deserves attention, just as I, because as I say, it originates from <coughs> highly <coughs> rigorous and very solid construction of string field theory. And <coughs> apparently, it gives a decent way to exercise ghosts, because what we know about ghosts? Ghosts is something which we don't want. Yeah? It's practically all we know. The only thing which we don't know up to the end how to get rid of them. Uh, there are a few approaches, and we know that 
in fact, Stragratsky statement was not very much correct. Well, it was correct, but it was not very rigorously formulated. He, first of all, he considered a very simple system. So in a system with constraints like F of R gravity, there are no ghosts even though there are high derivatives. So this we pretty much know. Uh, there are other constructions like KGB models, Galileans, and stuff like this. There are high derivatives. There are no ghosts, again, because there are special <coughs> relations between structures in the Lagrange. And one thing which was really omitted for, for a while <coughs> is the possibility to construct non-local stuff, meaning that it replace your canonical, very natural local propagator, uh, local kinetic curve, with something new. As long as gamma of box is an entire function, it's a brilliant object which can play a lot of we can, can play a huge role in our consideration of theories. Uh, and this is a sketch how this arises from the string field theory. This is practically what you get in string field theory. Everyone who <coughs> start doing some computation in string field theory will find out that any degree of freedom there, apart from canonical free propagation, uh, gets interactions. This interaction is equipped by a non-local operator. Leonard names it form factor. Whatever you name it, it's something uh, which in fact makes string theory computations finite and unitary, by the way, up to all loops. Uh, this is great, and, uh, but this means that we, well, this is trivial field redefinition, which means that we absorb this in the field phi and move this to the propagator. So this is the object which you want to consider. Yeah? to make uh, some connection with what we use to. But this is how the propagator looks in a normal theory. This is how it would be would you include high derivatives, and this for sure would have ghosts. And therefore, what is essential to have something like that, to have exponent of box or have exponent of entire function. Practically speaking, what you have to guarantee is that this function has no roots. As long as it has no roots, you are very much done because what you need, you need to count the roots. Okay? And now I return actually to the main subject, which is non-local gravity. Uh, I stick to its most simple formulation. Uh, actually, from general principles, you can understand that as long as, long as you want to equip your propagator, with some non-local factor, it's the simplest term which you can write. Because nothing simpler can be as long as you can, as long as you want to preserve scalar structure, don't involve factory indices, etc. etc. And, and this section was proposed in action in the paper by Biswas, Mazunder and Ziegel. And they managed even to find an exact solution, which was the big success in this as well as it was <coughs> it's possible to show two important properties that as long as you play with function f of box, for example, take it like this, you can make the propagator of physical modes uh, with proper size of kinetic terms, so goes free. And you can show that the Newtonian potential is regular. There is no singularity. Uh, in the first paper, they named it asymptotically free feature of gravity. And still, you have a lot of freedom. You are not uh, constrained with just box. You can consider other functions. And perhaps box is not the best candidate here for other reasons. But uh, for the simple and, let's say, model computation, it's OK. As, uh, <coughs> Leonardo has shown in the previous talk, this theory tends to be renormalized. Okay. Now, solutions apparently is quite hard to construct because you have to work somehow with your local equations. Uh, nobody knows how to work with them in full generality. But uh, we know something. One of the and one of the tricks which we know is that 
is that we can employ such an ansatz for our uh, background. Such an ansatz, in fact, is not some random combination. It is, in fact, would you consider local r squared gravity? It's one of the equations of motion, the trace of the Einstein equations in r squared gravity. It means, automatically, that if you have r squared gravity, and if you local r squared gravity, and if you have any solution in r squared gravity, it's automatically solution here upon these three conditions on your parameters. Uh, as I said before, f of <coughs> f is a function, okay? Yeah, this one means the, the derivative of this function, okay? With respect to that. So, it means, it means that practically the freedom is huge. Still, as a consequence, this means that Starobinsky solution is a solution here. Okay? Just because we remember that Starobinsky solution is an exact solution in R squared gravity. Therefore, we are returning back to the main subject, which is to consider inflation. And now I can explain why I want to consider inflation here. Because I want to consider inflation in a theory which, at least hypothetically, is going to be UV complete. Because nobody doubts that local R squared gravity in which inflation, in which Starobinsky solution was constructed, uh, this is not a UV complete gravity. Gravity needs completion. Uh, in some time, uh, you know, from Friday, Andrew Conroy will be giving a talk about <coughs> singularities uh, and the uh, Rajkur equation approach to the singularity in the theory and possibility of UV completion. But uh, for the moment, for me, what is interesting mm -hmm. to me now for this, for this extra thing, okay. So what is interesting to me is uh, to discuss this, uh, the inflation. Yeah? So wh what's the story? The story, if we go a bit back, the story is trivial in the sense that before, when Starobinsky constructed his solution, f of box was just one. Now we introduce new freedom in theory, quite big freedom, because we introduce a full function of the Lambert operator with just a few constraints on it. So what we naturally expect, even though the background is the same, we expect that perturbations are going to be different. <coughs> <coughs> the question is, however, how to analyze perturbations here. You remember. I specifically didn't put a lot of formula here because I don't know how much is possible to uh, percept formula in each of them lasts for more than one slide for this kind of theory. But I know for sure that I can explain that in principle you have to do whatever was written already in original papers on perturbations. You have your theory, you have to compute second variation of the section if you can do it. <coughs> in principle, it's not doable, but around specific programs, yes, it's doable. And then you have to play with equations, or you have to make use of constraint equations in order to get rid of all extra unnecessary degrees of freedom, which are not dynamical anyway. You have to come down with only one degree of freedom, and this is what has been done just in a few pages for a local theory by Starobinsky in his paper and he analyzed his inflation. The problem is that here, as long as we have infinite number of derivatives, this roughly infinite number is more difficult, infinite times more difficult. But fortunately, thanks to one genius student, I would say, we managed to overcome the struggle. This guy made almost all the computations from the scratch, and he made it happen in no, lo in no local theory. And the answer here is the following. Apart from a fact which was obtained some time before uh, in my collaboration with Mazunda and this was, uh, we have proven that classical perturbations are bounded in such kind of models for the backgrounds which we are interested in. It also became possible thanks to collaboration with Bancrafts and Sim de Jonkert, it was possible to show that in principle, if we take Starobinsky solution, we can come down with an action for just one single variable. It can be done just in a matter of two months of hard computation. And we're happy now because what we have 
on the paper, we have just an action for one variable. The Lagrangian looks at the canonical Lagrangian with one field u and some differential, some differential well, non-local operators. <coughs> this particular operator is nothing but some intrinsically it's some algebraic construction of a previously introduced function f. And in order to be on the safe side, in order not to spoil the theory, we must impose that this new guy also has no more than one root. Oh, so yes, it has no more than one root. So it means that propagator has no more than one pole, and as a consequence, there, are, there is no more than one state. This is what inflation, is an inflationary scenario was, because otherwise it will be gross. Again, it is not impossible, and uh, all the details can be found in this paper, as well as we hope to publish soon something way more extended analysis, because here we were able to tackle the problem when we were, when we were considering the De Sitter phase. Yeah? Because you see, the, the Stravinsky solution, as you pretty much know, it's what? It's a solution which has the De Sitter phase when T is much less than the critical time Ts, but then inflation ends. So the De Sitter phase is what can be analyzed up to the end, kind of immediately, uh, as much as you know how to play with non-local series. Yeah? And this <coughs> is this was done, and here we have shown that <coughs> apparently we have shown in this paper that uh, apparently there will be no deviations from the local theory, and this, there is no surprise in this because the sitter is a very simple background at the end of the day. However, what is true, as long as we will consider rigorously the, the all other regimes, we should find out corrections, corrections to what have been found in R squared graphs. The main question to us up to now whether we can detect these corrections <laughs> in the sky or in other words how much what we will find out for the spectrum and for the scalar tensor scalar ratio will be different from what we already know from the local stuff. The only thing which we know for sure is that these deviations are under our control and uh, uh, in principle, this is a bidirectional process. We can predict something for the observations, or other way around, to, based on observations, we can restrict these uh, non-local ingredients in the model in order to make them compatible with what we see. Because as uh, I explained, considering these non-local series is not to confront the experiment. The experiment is already confronted with R squared graphics. The reason for this non-local business is to make the story UV complete, which is the main motivation also. So the conclusion, <coughs> uh, just a short summary. It's a non-local generalization of Einstein's gravity. Uh, surprisingly, there are exact solutions to equations of motion, even though equations of motion are really horribly difficult. And moreover, you can proceed or for some specific, not so involved backgrounds, you can proceed with uh, computational perturbations and equalization. And so the current work in progress is to make this up to the end, at least around Starabinsky background, which is now not beyond the horizon. It's already on the paper and should be published shortly. So I hope it will give us some insight into the local models. Thanks.